Welcome to ABS Project again. Uh, my name is Alex Gordo Stam, and I'm an artist based in Barcelona. And this project is about uh, uh, some talks with different people with, uh, from different disciplines. And today we're going to talk to Peter Kunz that will uh, introduce himself, what he does, and what he, he knows about many, many things. Just, so please. Yeah, so my name is Peter Kunst. And uh, by education, I'm a theoretical physicist. And in recent times, I've, uh, like so many of my peers, I've been working in the software development and in the IT sector. But that's not that interesting. Maybe it is, you know, because um, in the IT sector now, we have all of these things with artificial intelligence. And you said that would be an interesting topic, right? Yeah, I remember that um, we had that uh, subject pendant to talk about which I really have a lot of questions and, uh, well, um, I think it's really, really interesting. Actually, in another, in an, another conference, we had a few, um, a few strokes about it, right? And, um, and maybe we can, we can discuss a little bit, I mean, in my case, from my complete ignorance about some technical issues, just, I just can talk about it from the, let's say, common sense uh, uh, perspective, but maybe you can have some more interesting insights I never thought about. So, um, yeah, like the first of all, it's just like, okay, what is the singularity? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, yes, that, that's the one that, uh, that it's really, really slaps in my face. And um, what is the singularity in, in now in, in, in astrophysics? No, in, in, in uh, uh, artificial intelligence, in ah. which like singularity, it seems to be the time where uh, there will be a self-conscious uh, artificial intelligence. Oh, okay, that, that, that definition. That is close to a human being, which that is the point that I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's a psychotherapist, and he said that there will never be something that will be close to a human being just for the fact that nobody is designing a, a machine that has an unconscious or just in case there's something as complex as we are uh, we just don't know if it will develop uh, something like that so at the end it's just like it will be something completely different like so how do you imagine these will be it, do you think there will be one day that the, there will be a machine that will be like us uh, so like in um all of the science fiction movies, right? Like Data yeah, in yeah. Star Trek or The Terminator and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my personal opinion, and as, as much as I understand the science and the research behind it, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with your, with your psychotherapist or, or friend or, or, you know, who says, who says this is um, not going to happen. Um, and there's also Turing's law, you know, that says that if you just base your, your machine on zeros and ones, then this will be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but but now, now, you know, we, but we have, we have other things, it, exactly, it, we have now fuzzy logic, we have the quantum computing and all exactly. these kind of things, but um, this is so much in their infancy and we, we still don't even understand how to manipulate properly um, these qubits, although there's lots of, lots of research going into that. There's a huge step from that research to imagine something that could mimic human behavior. and. Um, Fooling humans into believing that they talk to a machine, or fooling humans to believing that they talk to a human while they talk to a machine, and that can be done in certain contexts. And this is what yeah. what, what what people now refer to if they talk to about well, artificial yeah, intelligence. Yeah, exactly. Like people people from the outside, uh, they they just perceive the mimicking of a human being as an actual human being. So like city, exactly city, for example. Like if you talk to city, uh, sometimes it seems that that. That the machine actually it's it's you know it's pretty smart and it's getting smarter and smarter right? yeah but there's no actual consciousness beyond that no no absolutely not and and you know these are very very artificial pun intended yeah. <laughs> artificial <laughs> kind of conversations they are they are more like a pre-recorded script and mm -hmm. uh, and the machine or siri or or any of like an automated teller or um, there are these chat bots you know they can react to very specific types of questions and they get smarter now that those questions don't have to be explicit like always the same exact wording but can be a bit more 
um, you know, vary a bit based on language and based, based on, on, on things. And also now people can measure a little bit of emotion in the voice of the, of the person asking. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also being used now to detect people's, um, not just the identity, if you talk to a bank, for example, but also emotion, if you talk to um, a support line then the support line person will see who this guy is agitated so maybe I should uh, calm him down or something so this kind of facets you can now extract from the voice of the human and then you can make the machine or, or, or react to it in some way or the other so this is the intelligence that you can now see that we, we detect we measure we detect we, we kind of can categorize things but that's still a huge huge <laughs> um, distance away from a consciousness or from even reasoning and logic uh, where you could solve more complex problems and also see, th- you know, solve things or, or assess things that have not been done before. You know, this kind of self-learning, self-teaching is not really well, there. And, but, but from all these, um, let's say, paradigm that you're describing and that I was asking about, um, the, the, the important thing should be what is the definition of consciousness in these in a way that yep. what is there would be a machine that is self-conscious of its parts in the same way that we do in a way because we don't really perceive all our parts we have some limits into perceiving all our parts you say okay ah this hurts this i know ah this like but sometimes there are points that that hurts that you didn't even know that hurts so uh and and of course like the the unconscious part that we are by definition not aware of so at the end, um, there are actually self-conscious machines. There are some uh, operation systems that can detect some some errors and mistakes in their system, and they can even self-fix it. So uh, yeah, but that's also still a very controlled environment. I mean, again, so I mean, I think we are talking about uh, something that is very old, like you know, Plato and the cave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. it's, it's the same thing. So, so basically, what what we also our own consciousness just perceives life and, and the self based on what you see with your senses, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then you try to assess that and and react on it. And um, you will never really know that what you think and how you feel is exactly the same thing that another person thinks and feels. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a very high probability because we are all genetically more or less the, the the same <laughs> yeah, well, and then but there's language but, it's a barrier like, but there's also language and and, and 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 we know from from psychotherapy that yes people are different a lot <laughs> so it's it's not like everybody is identical um machines can be taught to kind of mimic this and do the same so that you have sensors you have things that you can measure and of course uh, computers these days have has have much different sensors i mean we have our our hearing and, and eyes and seeing and we detect shapes with, with um, um, our mind and so on and we can teach machines to do the same and machines have other sensors and they have strength in other places where we are much slower and this is where it seems to us amazing how much you can do with a machine but again I think we are, we are circling back into okay what the hell is consciousness and what, what uh, how is that defined and um, could a machine develop a consciousness and consciously take decisions about itself, as you said? And well, but the thing is that, others... that as we are building and improving that machine that is somehow mimicking us in a way, as it will get more and more sophisticated, there will be a point in which it will be difficult for you to, in certain like control environments, to make a difference between like, yep. a real human being and actually something that is artificial. Like, like her, I don't know if you have seen that movie, her, yeah. from, from, you know, yeah, you know, that, that's very interesting, um, sci-fi, um, um, you know, case in a way. And, uh, but then again, like, well, I, you know, it's this thing, like why uh, tag, you know, why human beings in the Western civilization like to tag everything just to define everything in the best way possible you know from one side it's okay but like we in this uh, i feel like in this uh field that we are talking about like it's the the boundaries are of the definitions and so blurry that it, it's kind of like consciousness in this context i don't even know if it's legit to to just 
just like even try to define it and to say, okay, we're just building a machine that has a purpose and then maybe the machine itself develops some other purposes by itself if we allow that to on the original design. So, well, yeah. I don't know what you think about it. So currently, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I mean, there's lots of research going on in, in this domain, of course, and, and what does it mean, you know, self-teaching machines and machines that then, then do new things that, have, that it has not been taught before. So, so there are lots of um, things that have already been achieved, but I'm still, I still remain very, very kind of <laughs> skeptical. Maybe it's my upbringing, I don't know. <laughs> sure. but, I, but, I, but I don't think that uh, you could, you could uh, really build or, you know, you could end up with something made of zeros and ones that is, um, in that sense, non-deterministic, you know. So I think at the end of the day, these machines, if you give them the same input, they will produce the same output. If you have give them the same experience, they will produce the same output again. Of course, it will adapt and learn if you allow it to. And, and uh, there are these, um, these machine learning algorithms, and, and but that's basically just you, you build um, decision matrices based on previous data that, that you fed it. Well, well and we this do is, that and this too. Is, this is how it learns. Yes, but again, this is a deterministic approach. So, at the same time, if it, if we have a live person, you and me, and hmm. anyone else, if you give me the same data on a different day, I might react differently, hmm. and the machine will not. So, if you if you feed it the same, you know, if you take two identical machines. Mm -hmm. and they get identical inputs, they will produce identical things. Mm -hmm. You take two, two humans, even twins, they give them sure. the same input, they will produce different things and then they, they go for some different tangents and, and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a huge complexity here that, that, we, that we simply cannot predict and, and, and compute with, with machines. And this is where, for me, the difference is really between a machine intelligence... Well, in a, way, in, in, in a way, the machine is more efficient, and that's what we are aiming oh, for yeah. at the end, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of like, course. I mean, no, machines can do many things that we cannot or can do only very slowly. And this is where the strength of these things are. But, but again, that's not a conscious thing for me. I mean, to me, this is not consciousness. To me, this is still programmed, and it has a purpose, and it does it well. And this is where, you know, um, giving certain control to machines in some place is a good thing because it has it plays on its strengths like, like, like uh, cars like, like driving, cars driving cars plane, planes have been landing themselves for years but, now but this one this 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 thing of like self-driven cars it is like you know the, the car needs to drive in an environment which is completely uh the chaos let's say because everything can happen and it has to somehow uh, adapt to every single second or millisecond on the actual variables that are happening at the same time. I so that is more or less some, you know. Well, how many accidents do people do? Yeah, cars. Yeah, pff, whatever. So, so cars is a very good uh, uh, example where I think that that uh, a really well taught algorithm can outperform a human, because algorithms will react faster. You can you can set up sensors in the car that can view 360 degrees. A human cannot. Mm -hmm. um, you, this thing will not get tired unless you did, it, its battery is off or, and mm -hmm. so on. So, so, so you, you can, just like, again, planes have been lending themselves for years now. Why not also cars that can drive around even if the, if the environments are changing? Sure. You cannot predict everything, but in time, uh, with, with experience, your model will, will learn how to take into account more and more and more situations. And at the end of the day, the risk that you will encounter a situation where you, you, it will cause an accident will be lower than for humans. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm compl I completely agree. The point is that the, that the way that the algorithm is put, just because it's facing a very unstable system or it is operating in a very uh, unstable environment uh, and it's actually getting better than us, in a way, um, it is more conscious on driving the us. So, in a way, in spite of <laughs> it's an interesting definition right? of consciousness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I don't. Know. I wouldn't define that as conscious. It's just basically adapted to this kind of environment, very controlled environment. You are in a car and you drive on the road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Of course, he can. You know, we, we are more multitasking because that exactly. car won't, won't toast our toasts in the morning. Exactly. Uh, ask it to cook cook your dinner or something, and it will go like, huh? 
Yeah. Where is that? Where is that? I can bring you to a restaurant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so this is this is what I mean with with you know controlled environments and and um, and uh, what the strength is. So, so and then the other the other thing is going philosophically back, surfing back to, okay, so what's consciousness, right? So what is? How do you define that? How do you um, um, define life versus not life, but something artificial? And um, where do you draw the line? Very interesting topic, actually. But this is this is this is really more philosophy than than hard science in that sure, sense. Sure, sure. But well, in this case, like um, there is also as well like a blurry line on the questions you arise from philosophy or common sense, whatever. And because if you need to design those machines to do things, th there has to be someone questioning where are we going in a way, and then you know technicians or scientists can can answer those questions in a way where you know from a technical point of view like okay uh, what is this you know if we have a car that drives better than a human being how is this going to affect us as human beings or how, how is this like con how conscious this car is uh, like blah 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 and so on and so on but, you know in a way and uh, do you think that these questions are are asked in in the scientific world or oh yeah 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 Absolutely. I mean, I, I think, I think this is this is super interesting to everybody who is who is really serious about these topics. I mean, I mean those guys who are building these um, um, AIs uh, for a purpose. I mean, of course, you want to mimic the human as much as you can, or you you want to make it uh, as uh, much better than than a human in, in in those areas, right? So those guys at, at Google who have been testing their self driving driving cars, I'm sure they are very keen to make sure it's better than a human. And um, uh, that that is always there with, with every every scientist I claim that at least I, I was lucky enough to meet a lot of people like that. Uh, I think ever since the atomic bomb and the <laughs> you know where where science let politicians decide, scientists are really really you know <laughs> hands off in that sense and say okay fine I I don't want to build that stuff that could be used for for evil uh, sure. purpose so. That's a very strong factor, but um, I think uh, there's also lots of this kind of AI um, algorithms, nevertheless, in the military, where where you you, you build drones sure. that, that are much better at killing people than a human would be. So, of course. but this is also no news in that sense. You know, like in the last Iraq War, and it was like pretty much long ago. There was like a, a one of these rockets that was like hitting a target of 10 10 square centimeters with a lack uh, with a mistake uh, margin of I, I don't know it was like centimeters. No one could like f you know fire something you know at thousand kilometers anyway and you know hit the point. In, I mean that's that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean if that's your your goal with 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 your smart um, rocket, then then this is engineering wise totally achievable there's yeah, still yeah. somebody who, who needs to give in the coordinates and sure. point it you know sure, and, exactly. and to take that decision that i don't i don't i don't think that should be a... <laughs> no me neither, me neither but like let's say efficiency wise it, it, but it, again again it's a controlled environment right so, so you specify the boundary conditions where you work in and then you can start doing stuff with it and um, at the end of the day also it's about um, it's always about data because you need to train your artificial intelligence with input you need it's just as good as its sensors are just for, like for us i mean i mean mm -hmm. also humans you have to to be trained get experience sure but and, and uh, i don't have get night data watch, like more like, exactly yeah. and this is also where machines excel you can feed night them vision. much more much more data than than a human can hope to learn in, in his lifetime so uh, specialized uh, machines are, are going to be better than humans in, in that sense at this but interpret data and analyze data and come up with innovation maybe innovation is a good topic um could you could you build a machine that invents new stuff i, I don't know probably that would be a interesting well that they're they're making um some tests about it in the art world right there for example i i there's a guy in madrid who who owns a, a huge private collection and he's He's really into digital art, right? And uh, now there are a lot of digital artists who are 
trying to push the boundaries of, of that, like artistic creations from, from some algorithms and creating some machines that are producing art, actually. And there's one, th that's one very interesting one. I I'm not really into digital art. I'm more like um, old fashioned guy and I'm old fashioned artist, if you want. But um, this digital art piece was like pretty interesting in which it seems that the machine was was um, taking uh, was working with uh, thousands of um, old paintings, and they were taking only the portrait parts, and then they were mixing all those portraits in a unique way. So every I don't know a few seconds, they were creating a new portrait that out from parts of other portraits that. Um, never existed before and actually the machine was not even recording them so it's just like a, an endless loop of new portraits every every 10 seconds or every 20 seconds sure. right so and some actually some of the outcome i mean some of the outcome was a little bit like well but some of the portraits that that this machine was creating was like somehow decent as a as a i wouldn't even know how to cat catalog those but of course it was realistic but not like hyper realistic so it's not was like a, a full fully finished uh, portrait but it was like some uh, some kind of cubist or semi abstract uh, well i don't know it's just not not a specifically very realistic one but we are really good on 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 somehow perceiving faces so it was but is that innovation because uh, let me just challenge you on this one i think it's super interesting but if i start the same algorithm, the same digital art on two different computers at the same time with the same input parameters and the same randomizer and everything, it should produce the same thing, right? This is what I mean by deterministic. So of course you can randomize based on time or something that it's a, it's a bit random, but that's again an algorithmic thing. So, so it's, it depends. It's... Yeah, well, of course, but if you, for example, if you random all the pixels involved, it is very difficult that, that you for some reason you get the same image even you have the sure no no obviously machines, i mean i mean so. you can you can it's like a lottery right you can you can randomize yeah, 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 yeah. stuff stuff uh, properly and then you don't get the same but nevertheless uh, the in in terms of what it does it is not i mean the guy who who did the algorithm and, and put it together now that that that's the the artist more or less right mm -hmm. and and the, the machine itself just executes that so so i would not call that an innovative machine i call the guy who thought of, of the idea and implemented it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the, the machine didn't create uh, itself, right? In a way, there was yeah. someone always like programming it and thinking what the outcome would be and what the exactly. problem to so this, solve so and this what is, the data to input and so on. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, so, so I think it's interesting, uh, and, and um, uh, but it's really, <laughs> as I said in the beginning, it's super far away from sure, but, but man, actual like, consciousness. But, but imagine like in, in 15 years, your job didn't exist like or i don't know maybe not at the level that i mean the job that you were performing uh, the, the past years uh, didn't even exist at the form that you were actually i don't know what you were doing exactly but i'm sure it didn't exist like 15 20 years ago in the That's same way true. that it was so imagine in 15 20 years uh if we would recall the same conversation uh, i think that the, the if this continues in the same way it, it will be kind of like uh, probably overcoming like science fiction in many ways i think yeah i, I mean know. if you if you if you do, do that way and and uh, would take somebody from the mid last century to, to today and show them what we can do this was also would also be total science fiction to that, to that guy yes no no i i think i think this is um a very philosophical <laughs> kind of topic at the end of the day right so so what is um possible in, in, in all of this area and if you if you go back in the past no i mean there are few people who predicted what kind of te technological advances we will have now and um, it's it's equally difficult to predict what we will uh, come up with next although i tend to believe that we create things that are really useful to us and not stuff that will hurt us so minus all of the military stuff but even that got better i think this the world is a is a much safer place actually than it used to be 150 years ago. I mean, 150 years ago, uh, we had so many wars even 100 years ago. Um, 
and now those are base it's crazy and i don't think this will happen again on that scale unless the global society breaks down for some reason and and also how we as a whole humanity now manage with this pandemic also shows me that we are interested actually in keeping everybody uh, safe and healthy so so i think we will not build destructive things we will build things that help us so if you map that to artificial intelligence we will build tools and and those tools will be intelligent tools that help us to achieve stuff that we otherwise would not be able to achieve and then we will have different jobs because then of course you will need to manage those tools or then you can do stuff that you haven't been able to do before which is fun so I think this is nice. I don't think there is any problem with that. <laughs> no, no, me neither. And, like, don't, and, don't take me wrong. But, you know, there's always, like, someone out there complaining about everything. So at the end, like, okay, these things were going to take all the jobs away from us. You yeah, know? of course. Yeah, of well, course it will. But, <laughs> but it will create yeah. many new ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. but, yeah. Um, um, and all those monotonous... Uh, let's say jobs that don't, don't really need some some sort of um, human intelligence let's say exactly um, will be off will, will, will be done like we can see it now it's not that it will happen in 10 or 20 years it's happening now Amazon logistics you, you see all those all those like platforms that, that yeah. are dealing with with a thousand packages at the same time like you don't need guys carrying boxes no. anymore. I mean, I mean, what might come next is all, all these uh, things that they experiment with already, you know, with drones, that they deliver with drones. Yeah, yeah. And some of the science fiction movies already had that, like, um, um, what was the one called from Spielberg, the, the Steven Spielberg, the last one, um, Ready Player One. Ready Player One. He was, he was uh, getting deliveries with these drones. So yeah, but this one, <laughs> but you know, this one, uh, then I, I don't think this will happen just, be, just for the fact that there would be people hunting drones and you know that the well i mean it, it might work in some space like i don't know united states where everybody has a house and everybody has a garden so the drone can land in a way but they, let's let's think in barcelona where i'm now uh, we live in flats in buildings where the drone will leave the packages and i i mean and there will be like imagine we just live so jam-packed or oh, i don't know manhattan yeah, yeah, yeah. All no, of there a sudden, are there will be like limits. one million drones. O flying. Obviously, obviously. No, no. I mean, there have to be certain rules and limits as, as usual. But imagine in Australia where there's nothing and nobody sure. in, in vast areas. I mean, that would be a huge improvement. So, so and again, super cheap, the, the, like the right, tool, the right tool for the right problem, obviously. So, so this is sure. something that is, that is not... A, you can always find, just like with the self-driving cars, you can always find a situation where it wasn't made to, to re react well. And then you work around it or then you say, OK, fine, in this situation, I'm going to stop the car and somebody else has to continue because I, I, I just quit. So so these, these are things that, that could happen also for the drones, and I'm, I'm sure they will. And and this is also where, surfing back again to the artificial intelligence, where the most intelligent artificial intelligent um, programming will know where its limits are. So it will be self-aware in that sense that it should t be telling you, you know what? That's not part of my programming. And Siri already does that. <laughs> sure. If you have some conversations with Siri, you know, and, and, then, yes, and yes. then the voice would tell you, I don't know what you mean. Could you please specify again or something? Sure. You know? Oh, no, she, she just says to you, oh, I can search in Google for you if you want. Exactly. Which right. is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's already nice because then if the, if the machine doesn't understand what you want, it will just sim sim uh, should tell you back, look, I can do this. And I have no clue what the robot else do you want from me. I was sure. built to do that. That's what I can do. And if you want something else, sorry, ask someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So that, but there, that is... there, there always might be someone like programming some complex, like you know, uh, this like the billion of uh, the billion of in a science fiction movie, right? That there's always there's always someone um, trends in a way like. breaking the laws of of these like ethically correct let's say devices right in which there will be some who would be definitely out of that might be most likely fine you could you could certainly then build an ai that is um, 
that intends to fool people, right? And mm -hmm. pretend to be something that it's not. And like spam today or phishing mails and stuff like that, right? It's yeah, the yeah. same concept. Yeah, yeah. So that would be on the AI level that you do phishing on the AI level and you pretend you are something that you're not. Mm -hmm. But also that if you can ask the right questions, you will you will expose it. So so it's it's um it has its limits. It is not something that, that you can just improvise, you know, like in, in um in Casa del Papel, you just improvise and you do the next big thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But this is not something that the machine will be able to do, I think. And, and well, and th there's a, uh, about the same topic, but there's another question I have. Where are we now on, on uh, artificial intelligence? So how developed and what kind of things we can, we can do now in artificial intelligence? And the stuff that we, you know, for example, I wouldn't know. That I just, my knowledge about it is just like, news that I can read in, in, in whatever, you know, media. And in, in what context do you ask? So what do you mean? Yeah, that's true. Like how complex, how complex these artificial intelligence machines uh, are capable of doing now instead of, uh, so, so what is currently referred to as AI, um, and what I see that is now being implemented in many, many places. Also, what we've been doing recently in, in, in our company is mostly to automate stuff. So when you have a, when you have identified a certain set of tasks of humans that are repetitive or somewhat repetitive, that's when you uh, try to automate it. And, and this is where you do uh, these, these methodologies of, of what we call AI, because the AI should adapt and learn and, and of course, react in the same way or produce the same result as the humans in their repetitive work. And repetitive is the key term here, you know, so that that because you need to train the machine, you need to give it data, 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 data all the time and, and so that it will react the same way as it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we can do today. And we, we are getting better and better and better at that. And the, and the algorithms are now really refined. They are uh, mainstream more or less. So we are teaching this at universities now. So there are uh, kids coming out of school who can then apply this mm -hmm. and are, re are really good at that and, and can analyze the data and, and um, produce uh, new algorithms that, that can automate that. And this you could apply basically in any business that has repetitive tasks. So um, mm -hmm. that's what, where we're going. And, and of course it's true that, oh, we're gonna lose jobs. Well, that's the whole point. You want to lose the jobs that are not interesting. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And, and let's say educate uh, new human beings with a higher profile as well. Right. Yes. So, so this is where, where, where education is, is, of course, paramount and very, very important. And this is where I think then the challenges of society will be that, OK, so if we are optimizing away many of these uh, low cost labor jobs, um, then you will need to do something about society so that we train people better. We educate people better. We help people to get educated. So mm -hmm. education should have a much higher standing than it has today. It has to be um, much more accessible on any level so that people can really then, then find something that, well, they, that they can do. Fortunately, it is already happening, but not from, let's say, from the state providing, let's say, uh, YouTube, it's much more, well, YouTube with a criteria is much more educative than many schools and high schools uh, that, that I know of, in a way. Y you of have course. absolutely all the knowledge possible in, in online. But it's not, not yet equal opportunity in a sense that if you have, um, Okay, everybody can learn stuff if they have the drive and, and the time and, the, and you know, mm -hmm. but many, many um, places, if you just come from a background where you would need a bit of help, you know, would need a bit of guidance and so on. This kind of help and guidance is not provided today. If you're lucky, you get it from somebody, but this is what I mean. It's not yet really equally available to everybody. And also mm -hmm. these things happen and very often they happen with some profit in mind. Even you, on YouTube, you have to watch God knows how much commercials if you want to get something hmm. interesting out of it, or then you need to pay for it. So there is still still a lot that, that society would need to do to really get into more like an education and learning society. So this is where- But there's many- Lots there's of work like, to be done. I don't, you know, there's so much free content that you would, yeah. you would need like 500 likes to, to, uh, to you know, get it. So I there's lots of free content, but there's lots of 
crappy content as, as well. So also yeah. curating that content is something that um, mm. would need to be done. Wikipedia is excellent because that's curated. Um, mm -hmm. A lots of content on, on, on YouTube is outdated. It's mm -hmm. not valid anymore. I mean, there's so many things that, oh, you need to fix your iPhone this way. Well, it was uh, three versions ago and now it's not like that anymore. So, you know, these, these are the things that, that um, could become a bit more, I'm not saying controlled, but, you know, curated better in a sense and free like Wikipedia. And, well, and but who but pays for how it? How you do it? How, how you do it is in, exactly. is in, in a way that who, who decides which one is correct in a way. I mean, it is a tool that YouTube is a tool that everybody can upload multiple so, but, content. So. so, so, so you see um, many jobs right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. The YouTuber so, job didn't exist before. So, 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 just... so, so you see, I mean, we just would need to uh, pay for it somehow and, and, and make it a valued thing. And this is what I'm talking a little bit about uh, moving into a, a society that is more like an education or a knowledge-based society. And, and there are things like that. So, yeah, but look, look at my, I mean, I, I, I'm not, let's say, a spring chicken anymore, let's say. <laughs> so, um, come on. Well, <laughs> exactly. I'm, let's say I'm not 15 year old anymore. And uh, I stopped watching TV in a way. I just watch YouTube uh, because that's the content I want to see. And I have, there's like plenty of conferences and plenty of like alternative media, let's say, that I'm ideologically I'm more close of than the average bullshit that comes sure. out from the TV. Sure. Right? So I stopped. But that's but okay, that's a deficiency TV of TV. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a deficiency of TV and also you you, you are interested I, I think in, in many things um, of your background, your art and everything and you don't get that on TV. I mean TV Of course, uh, yeah. I mean I, I, I I'm not, not the target audience anyway. Me neither. So I've not watched TV since ages so so we only have a, a tv <laughs> we only bought tv for my kids because they love to work, watch some of these totally crazy silly shows that i despise like germany's next top model or something like that. <laughs> 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 the bachelor yeah, and, yeah. and you know so they enjoy these things i don't but but you know <laughs> sure yeah, and, yeah, and all the other things stuff. and all the other things we have already seen the tv went off into netflix amazon prime hulu sure. whatnot and that's fine because then you get content and you watch stuff um, on your own schedule as you wish without advertisement much much nicer than tv hmm. and uh, the rest we <laughs> don't get me started on information now, that would be an interesting artificial intelligence topic right okay yeah that, cutting that could be... cutting through the crap and getting the actual news and not the fake one yeah, yeah that yeah. would be a cool project that could be well you would be shot and then there <laughs> exactly <laughs> if the nsa finds out that you build this well you need to take this offline because otherwise people would know what we're really doing exactly <laughs> that could be a fantastic one though uh yeah just like open source and you know people program it uh, yeah. themselves and the real news yeah well yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know look at what what happened with uh with assange right like <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah, he's well, still stuck in Russia or what, or where is he? I don't know. I don't know. He was in the Equatorian <laughs> uh, Embassy in London, if I'm not mistaken. Or in was London, London or where? Where was he? I can't remember. But me neither. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so we we can have that conversation in another in another tongue maybe sooner, uh, maybe later. And uh, yeah. do you want to step into astrophysics? So it's funny because you were asking me about the singularity, you know, and th this yeah. term exists in astrophysics as well. Okay, so I did. So know it that. So it doesn't describe the singularity in terms of the step of evolution of of uh, mankind into uh, artificial intelligence, but it's more like an actual object in space. Uh -huh. That that um, so the black holes basically are singular in that sense mm -hmm. that they fold space times time over themselves. Mm -hmm. So, in that space and time and that, you know, there is different or doesn't exist in the way that we think of mm -hmm. space and time anymore. So, these are singularities in astrophysics. Okay. And um, if you talk about a singularity object or 
these kind of things, then then that's that's what you mean in that context. It's, it's okay. very very fascinating because for a long time um, people have been struggling with, with the whole notion. Okay, so what is what the hell is a black hole again, and how can we see it if it's you know swallowing all of the light and everything? So you cannot see it directly; you can just see it indirectly. Hmm. And there has been lots of research also about um, showing that there is actually emissions from a black hole. There is some radiation coming out. And how is that possible and how does that work and, and so on and so on and so forth. So lots of things. And uh, the universe it itself gives us, I think, a lot of challenges that are totally unknown. Um, we have many more questions now than we had a hundred years ago. Well, there's also many more people uh, asking those questions. Yeah, but a hundred years I, ago, uh, things were simple, you know. I mean, well, we, had, sure. you know, we have the stars, we have the Milky Way and stuff. Hmm. And now, and now we look, look like, huh? So the universe probably started with the Big Bang, although also that is not totally sure. We have it's the best theory we have. Nobody, has, <laughs> yeah, sure. you know, even though like like uh, quantum physics, it's kind of like super weird, like this multiverse thing, like multiple dimensions, and then the the yeah. string theory, like so, so all of that stuff. These are theories, and we will not we cannot prove them. Be no, of course, because yeah, because the, we don't have experiments to prove them or disprove them. But it's. Yeah. Explain can explain a few things. So there are a few problems with that, of course, and, and these are the favorite topics that that I, I talk to my friends uh, when they ask me about stuff like that. It's like, okay, so do you know why? Do you know the concept of antimatter? You know what that is? Yeah, yeah. That, well, this this is uh, allegedly how the Big Bang started, right? There is no, nothing, no. and then there's antimatter, and then and then it's split. No, no, no. Antimatter, matter. antimatter started after the Big Bang. Before the Big okay. Bang, there's nothing. There's not even time and space and nothing. So mm -hmm. at least if you follow that model, so it it doesn't make sense to ask the question what was before the Big Bang because there was no time. So, so, yeah. so, so today we can only answer or or have a theory about how the universe looked like. 10 to the minus uh, 23 seconds after the Big Bang. Bang. So, you know, mm -hmm. so very, very close to the Big Bang, but, you know, like infinity is necessarily close to the Big Bang. How did the universe look like? So these are the questions we can, we can probably um, discuss, but uh, what was before, we don't know. And at that time, when, when the, the af after there is all of the space and energy, there is an equilibrium between matter and antimatter. Mm -hmm. It's a total equilibrium. You have the same amount of both, and then you have like a soup or a plasma of thing that is then matter antimatter. It it creates, destroys, creates, destroys, radiates away, it creates, destroys, blah blah blah. So it's like this, you know, equilibrium. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you see antimatter today in the universe? I have absolutely no clue. No, the answer is no. If you would, there would be stuff lighting up and d destroyed and radiate and stuff. Okay. We don't see that anywhere. So where the hell is all the antimatter? If in the beginning it was an equilibrium of 50-50. Where is it? Maybe the process of colliding with matter created just matter. No. That's we know that from physics because at CERN, you know, in the accelerator, we can create antimatter, not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can have it collide again and then we see that it get, all we get is radiation. Okay, so um, hmm. where is it? Because it should be, so if, if it exists, we should see it. Mm -hmm. If there would be chunks of the universe that is antimatter, the boundary would be super hot. We, we should see that, right? Sure. So uh, we don't. Do you know how we explain that? No. In modern astrophysics? I have no clue. So my understanding, maybe I'm wrong. So my understanding of this is, um, because I haven't followed that particular topic, is that it's, we explain it with a trick, <laughs> with a very simple trick. So the trick is that while the universe expands and it expands very fast, at some point it kind of freezes in state. And you have this equilibrium of matter and antimatter and it changes. And at the moment in time where it like expands enough so that it cools off enough that it's it's not this plasma anymore but it's kind of lumps into matter and antimatter mm -hmm. it just happens to be in a state where there is much more matter than antimatter okay. <laughs> and freezes like that in space and the probability of that being nearly zero is explained away by well you know we have the multiverse and we have so many universes doing big bang in ours we get this ratio of matter and antimatter 
<laughs> Great, yeah, well, it makes sense. It solved the problem, at least. <laughs> and there may be others where the ratio is one and, and everything goes boof and the universe is empty because it's just radiation. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't find it particularly um, satisfying theory, but that's, you know, just me. But we don't have a better one today. So that's just the point I'm making is that we have no fucking clue about the universe. Just nada. Yeah. We, have, we have a relatively weak theory with this Big Bang theory. It's okay, but it's it's all we got, okay? Yeah. It has lots of holes in it, and we explain those holes away with all these weird, you know, inflation and, and multiverse and blah, 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 which are all mechanisms that are so even weirder, you know? And if you take the the, uh, the Pareto principle, or, or not the Pareto, yeah. the, the, the uh, Occam's razor and say, say yeah. hey, it, the simple solution is a solution. Is this, uh, yeah, yeah. That is not simple. This solution no. is not simple. It's, no, it's the, but it's we the haven't found we haven't found the simple solution yet. What is even more mind-boggling is the fact that um, you know we have the Big Bang. Boof. So intuitively, you would think that by today, it's like slowing down, right? Mm -hmm. No, if if there's nothing that that uh, somehow deaccelerates it, that then there's no friction, then it doesn't de deaccelerate. Fine, but it would be. It would be expanding with the same rate, right? So, no, no, no. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> it is expanding in accelerated rate, as if somebody from the inside would be blowing it up. Okay. And in a massively accelerated rate, as it is. This was actually measured by the experiment I was working on in the end of 90s. The Sun Digital Sky Survey showed this for the first time that, oh shit, we have to reintroduce the cosmological constant, which the cosmological constant was a thing in the early 20th century where we had the so-called steady state universe. Uh -huh. That the universe as is always existed, mm -hmm. as is, so no big bang, it's like this. Mm -hmm. And all of the stars and galaxies are kept in place by a magic force called mm -hmm. the cosmological constant that ex ex you know, accelerates them away from each other so that they don't fall upon each other. Because if you put everything, just you know, put everything like uh, raisins in a cake, <laughs> you have to have the cake that holds the raisins in place. Sure. Otherwise, all of this would just, you know, collapse in gravity. So the, the cake is this cosmological constant. It keeps everything at bay. Mm. Now, if you have the Big Bang and everything is thrown out apart, so it's just acceleration that keeps things apart, how can you accelerate even more? Well, you add back the cake, the cosmological is so constant, and you blow them out even more. Uh huh. That's our theory. Okay. Cool, huh? Very satisfying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it, yes. It just, it just only depicts that we are like monkeys without hair, in a way. <laughs> Very much so. So this is why I love love astrophysics because it just so shows really. I mean. We, we call ourselves smart and clever and great, and we cannot even explain the universe. So okay. we're not. We're, we're, I think that there are two things that are, in a way, overrated in the 21st century. One is like 21st century is overrated itself, and then humanity. It, like it's pretty clear. You just need to go on Google, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on YouTube, like in a way. And so, yeah, yeah. Okay, many that, many, many man, people I said won't that. I will be able to sleep tonight just because. Of what... <laughs> so. Uh, who was the philosopher who said it was a mistake to climb down the trees anyway? So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> he was right. What the fuck? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, man, that I have. I think that I have much more many questions, but. Uh, <laughs> We can keep. We can expect like the audience or whoever would listen to this uh, to keep <laughs> up like for for more than one hour. So maybe we yeah. can do a uh, a second round of this during the quarantine if this keeps up. We sure. can do it if you want to. All right then. So yeah. great. So was fun. thank you very much. Uh, thank we'll, you. We'll have a second round with this again soon. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> See ya.